Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. We are here on this Thursday, the eve of K-State's Super Regional appearance against Virginia. The Batcats getting ready to play their 60th game of the season tomorrow, and they will do so just two wins away from Omaha and the College World Series for the first time in school history. K-State's first trip to the Super Regional since 2013, only the second in school history. They ripped through the Fayetteville Regional last week and i mean that it was an impressive run we talked about what k-state did when we got there and it goes back to what we were saying about a week and a half ago this team they could be out of the the regional by monday when we talked they could have been playing for a trip to go to the super regionals like everything was on the table for them and we saw the peak of what they could do the bats were timely they they got a great pitcher and hagan smith uh, in the game against arkansas and were just able to get to him in the right time and they they held on from there, and then they took care of business against inferior opponents in Louisiana Tech and SEMO. And here they sit now with uh, a little bit of help from SEMO and knocking out Arkansas to where they sit right now, and they're going to face a Virginia team that is certainly gettable. Uh, and we know that K-State has the ability to go in and beat really any team that is on their schedule. We've seen it at times this year. Yes, there have been the bad, but there has also been the good. And in some of that good, we've seen them take series from teams along Virginia's caliber. I mean, K-State took a series uh, this year from Oklahoma State. That was a big deal. Oklahoma State was also a regional host and a top national seed. This is the kind of thing that I I wouldn't put it past K-State to get it done, and it feels like the momentum they have here is a really, really good thing. And it's more of something we talk about in basketball and some of the other sports, but they are going to have the best player on the field the entire weekend in Kalen Culpepper. And when you have that, that's always going to give you a chance. And everybody else is starting to play their best baseball. Some of the the best that we've seen uh, from from the bullpen over the last couple of weeks, months, really. And some of the bats starting to come alive. Chuck Ingram was a revelation in Fayetteville finding himself again. So K-State set to face Virginia. Best of three series. Game number one is tomorrow night, Friday at 6 o'clock. Uh, and you're going to be able to watch it on ESPNU and ESPN+. Plus. Yeah, you said that Casey will have the best player on the field in Kalen Culpepper, and I think that you could make an argument that they probably have the best pitcher in the series, too, with Jackson Wentworth. I, mean, I think that with both of those guys, if if you get good pitching, you have a chance. And the, the tricky thing for the series against Virginia is going to be you're probably going to allow some runs because Virginia has one of the best offenses in the NCAA this season, and they can really, really hit the ball. the The way to really combat that is, you know, that you're going to have to give up. You're going to give up runs. How do you stop the bleeding? And the one way that I think that you can really do it is to avoid walks. And K State has had some problems this year with walks, and they kind of came back to bite a little bit in Fayetteville, but it ended up not mattering in the end. But if you can get good starts from Owen Boromo where he's not walking anybody and Jackson Wentworth where he's not walking anybody, you're probably going to have a chance in the first two games. It's that third game where it gets a little more hairy if you get there. And it'll all depend on how the bullpen is used and can you get an effective tie rule for the game three if you get there. But I said on Monday that I think that this case 18 was probably more meant for tournament play. Because if you have two really good starters, and at a lot of times this year, K-State has had two good starters with Owen Borama and Jackson Wentworth when he moved from the bullpen to being a starting pitcher, you're going to be in a lot of games. And in these games where it's kind of that winner-take-all mentality, if you get two good starts, there's no reason that you can't be 2-0. and Yeah, that's true. And, and I think also, it, really, I think it's pivotal that it, you get that first good start from Borma and you kind of set the tone there. And then game one, if you're in it, you can put everything you have into game one as long as you give yourself that chance. And then very similar to the position that K-State was kind of in in the game against SEMO where they get that game, okay, go into that. You're, it's not like you're playing just, hey, whatever happens, happens. But you go into that and you don't have to necessarily – throw everything at it you can you can kind of hold back a little bit because you know that you have that cushion you get that cushion if you win game one of the super regional and i I think that it'll be interesting to see what k-state does because like you said from the get-go like virginia is kind of the total opposite of what you just saw in arkansas 
Arkansas's offense was a giant question mark, especially down the stretch run of the season. Uh, and they were really based in their pitching, which had also kind of started to leak oil. And Virginia, total opposite. This is a team that they hit the ball like one of the best in the country. They were top 15 in home runs this season as a team. Just for an example, Virginia hit 114 home runs this season. K-State hit 66 as a team. So pretty big gap there between those two teams. And then if you look at some of the other numbers, Virginia as a team this season, they hit 336 at the plate, a wide gap between them and K-State there because K-State hit 274 as a team. But kind of like what we, you know, you're saying here, K-State is going to have the advantage on the mound in this series because they've done a pretty good job in most areas of limiting things. And I think as average at times as the pitching staff has been this year, they did not play like an average pitching staff for most of the Fayetteville Regional, and you saw a lot of things to be encouraged moving forward with some guys stepping up and certainly guys looking probably the healthiest and most effective they've been all season. Yeah, and if they can avoid the walks, I think that they can really kind of take another jump in Charlottesville. I, I just think that there's a chance that Kasich can win this series, and I think that it's probably better than – even the books have it. I think that K State's like plus one eighty to win the series. I, I would say that's probably closer, like plus one fifty, because I, I just think that there's a chance that with how K State plays, I could give Virginia fits. Virginia pitching, uh, their WHIP uh, this season is one point seven, which is very very bad. So if you can get two base yeah. runners per inning, I think that with how K State plays and puts pressure on other teams. Virginia's catcher is not doesn't have the best arm and doesn't really throw a ton of people out. So if K-State can continue to get base runners and move them around, I know that it drives both of us crazy at times with how Pete Hughes kind of runs the offense and kind of just really seems to force things at times. But if this is the series to do it because Virginia doesn't have great pitching and the catcher doesn't throw a lot of guys out. So this could be a series where as soon as you get on base, you're probably running. Yeah, no, that's that's absolutely true. And here, here's the other thing that, like, you talk about limiting walks and how important that will be. Obviously, if a team hits the ball well, you don't want to give them free base runners. But if you go and look at, at what K-State did, they played their best against Arkansas and the last half of the game against Louisiana Tech and then the game against SEMO by limiting the free base runners. In the game against Arkansas, they only gave up four walks in the entire game. Uh, three of those were by Wentworth, who was really good. And so I encourage that neighbors only walked one guy. And then you go and look at what they did against SEMO. They were in control uh, for the majority of that game. They walked six there, but it was really never much of a threat, and you could kind of do it with the cushion you had. The really big one, though, that that's kind of stuck and stood out with me was how things went in the game against Louisiana Tech because we saw they they had some struggles there uh, before the the weather came in and you know washed things away for that night and they had to go back the next day and go out and start. If you look at some of the numbers from that game, when Louisiana Tech did their damage earlier, you know earlier on there, I think K State was at like six walks through the first handful of innings of that game, and that's where all the Louisiana Tech runs came from. And then the rest of the game. Maybe they walked one. Um, I know that there have for some reason the stat broadcast uh, doesn't have stats from the Louisiana Tech game, so I'm going off of my memory here. But it, they either walked one or no guys the rest of the game after they went to the bullpen off of Borma, who was wild the entire game. And obviously you shut down Louisiana Tech, and the offense was able to just kind of explode from there. I think that's really the key to this. And I, I think K-State – should go into this with a lot of confidence. I think K-State fans should go into this with a lot of confidence. I I, I, w I really think that K-State has a legitimate chance to get this thing done uh, when they go there just because it, it feels like they've got good momentum right now. We're starting to see the actual team that had all the potential back at the start of the season that was getting lots of high praise. Yeah, I had somebody uh, in my mentions on Twitter kind of say, after the Arkansas game that it just seems like they're playing a lot more loose and free and that they're playing like they have nothing to lose. And I, I kind of agree with that because I think that there was probably a lot of pressure upon the outside and even inside because you had been so close to making the NCAA tournament the last two seasons to finally break through. And then once you get there, 
I think that they've kind of ridden the wave and have really exploded. And I know that we were pretty young in 2013, but I feel much better about potentially K-State beating Virginia than I did about beating Oregon State back then. Because I, I just felt like that Oregon State team was pretty unstoppable and felt like that they were pretty bound for Omaha from the beginning. This Virginia team is very beatable, and it's going to come down to can K-State score enough to keep up because you know that Virginia is going to score. So how can you keep your bats hot? And the, probably the X factor of the entire series is if you can get more out of Chuck Ingram. Yeah, well, and and you're right because you're, 2013, that Oregon State team, they were the number three national seed. So this Virginia team that you're getting here, they were they were number 12. I mean, K-State... Obviously, they were a, they were a one seed themselves, a regional host, but they were, you know, for all intents and purposes, number fourteen in that mix, and they had to go to Corvallis, and that like that's just a really tough situation to be in, and that like Oregon State baseball still good, very good, but that is like, you know, that's that's peak of the powers Oregon State, where if you go through and you you look at everything that they were doing in that stretch, I mean, they have guys that they were sending to Major League Baseball and guys that are still playing. I mean, like Michael Conforto was on that team uh, for Oregon State. So that's one of those to kind of keep in in the back of your head. Like, this is not as good of a team as K-State saw in 2013 against Oregon State. Now, this is not as good of a K-State team that was there in 2013 in terms of what you know you're going to get from them. But I do think you could make the argument that if this K-State team performs at its peak, it might be more talented than the 2013 team. When you think about all the different prospects and guys that are in the mix for this team that people have really high thoughts of outside of K-State circles and from a national perspective. Yeah, I was going to say that I think that this team probably has more MLB draft picks than the 2013 K-State team did. And that, that's saying something because that 2013 team was pretty loaded as well. And kind of getting back to like the Oregon State-Virginia comparison, I don't even think that this Virginia team is probably the best Virginia team in the last four or five years. So th- this is a probably the chance to get Virginia because Virginia has typically been known for really good pitching. But this year, it's all about how they hit. So again, it's just, can you keep up? Can you get the base runners on? Can you force the issue? Because, I mean, we've seen in college baseball, teams will make mistakes if you really try and force the issue. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. But put put the juice on somebody else in there. Uh, some of the other guys on that team that uh, I think of now, uh, the catcher on that team was Nate Esposito, who actually he he played for the Omaha Storm Chasers uh, a couple years ago, so he was in the Royals farm system. Jace Fry was a, a major league pitcher. Mm. Matthew Boyd also a tough pitcher that that was on there and pitched for the Tigers for a lot of years. So, like that is the kind of thing you dealt with with that team. And K-State, they found a way. They were close in that Super Regional, but uh, certainly not facing a team of that stature, and we'll see how ultimately ends up going. Now, in terms of big picture, because it's not just the, hey, got treat this game by game, everything else going on, there is a much larger thing to talk about and discuss that ties into a lot of other things that we've seen with K-State sports over the last five years, essentially, I guess a little more than that now, considering the timeline that we're on. So six years, if you if you want to go that far. But it involves Gene Taylor, because you think of what Gene Taylor has done since getting to K-State, where the hires, they just seem to get better and better for him. Obviously, Chris Kleiman has been a dynamite hire for him, something he, that he couldn't screw up. Like, you had to get that right. You have to get football right at K-State, and Gene Taylor has obviously done that. And then you go ahead and you think, okay, Did really well with Jerome Tang in basketball. People are satisfied there. There is a juice and an expectation level that goes with basketball now that even during, you know, the good years of Frank and Bruce was not there. Like people think the ceiling of K-State basketball is higher right now because of Jerome Tang. And you can go around to some of the other spots and start to say, oh, you know, it seems like Gene Taylor made a good hire on the volleyball side, too. And he's also navigated some really tricky situations with these coaching moves where like you kind of got to open the door and tell Bill Snyder to walk out of it. You kind of got to tell Susie Fritz, who made your volleyball program, hey, there's the door, walk out of it. Like, he's navigated these well. He's made correct hires. And obviously, one of those that's in the mix here is the fact that he had to hire Pete Hughes. And 
It hasn't gone the best up until this point, but certainly a lot can be rectified and changed with revisionist history if K-State is able to advance out of this super regional. So my question for you, Drew, is if K-State makes it to the College World Series, would that be Gene Taylor's greatest accomplishment as the athletic director at K-State, is hiring a baseball coach that has brought in all this talent and leads them to the College World Series for the first time? Ooh, God, in that's terms tough. of in, ter- in terms of on field and on court success, like I don't want well, you going. Well, you know, he's raised a lot of money. I, I don't care about that stuff. It's great. Uh, it, it is important. But for this conversation, I'm going to make it a lot easier for you. We're only talking about on field, on court performances. In terms of on court, on field performances, it's probably number two for me behind winning the Big Twelve in football. I just think that there's more like cachet with football and you get all that added advantage uh, with football. But I I think that it's probably number two for me behind that. And and I know that basketball is made in elite eight in that time or two elite eights and Jerome Tang's time frame and won a basketball uh, big 12 championship as well. But I think that the reason that it's probably number two for me is go and look at KSA baseball's history. I mean, it's, it's very slim. You know, the KSA it's only in their fifth NCAA tournament ever. This is only the K-State's second Super Regional ever. It's very, very hard to win consistently in baseball at K-State. And not just K-State, but for a Midwest team in general. So to be able to get to Omaha, I think, would probably be the second uh, behind the football Big 12 championship because there's just so much non-history for baseball that to hire a coach that can get to Omaha, I think that that kind of like shows that even like even with Pete Hughes getting there and if Pete Hughes moves on, like whenever there needs to be an ex baseball coach, you can say, Hey, we have, we hired somebody that can get to Omaha. And I think that that's something that kind of the baseball program needed and they needed new blood because K-State just doesn't have that history. And the only NCAA tournament births have been post 2010. Well, I do think that that's important is that you're, you're now proving to somebody that it can be done at K-State. Like Pete Hughes, even if long-term, because like I, I I would tell people that don't mistake what happened over the course of three games, which in the sport of baseball is a very small sample size. Don't mistake that for what was a pretty underwhelming and disappointing regular season. Like just as easily as K-State is now two games away from the College World Series, they very much so could have also been sitting on their butts last weekend and not playing in the NCAA tournament because I don't think anybody could have made a legitimate gripe that this team deserved or didn't deserve to be in the tournament. Like you could have because of your biases and you could have said, well, like the schedule was better, all these different things, which is why I I said like they are going to be in the committee's not going to leave them out this time. But in terms of if you watch them and you make that determination you you, got to be honest with yourself and you say, okay, this team has struggled at times. The record's not overly impressive. They underachieved, like could have kept them out. So that's not necessarily what you need to do. But if Gene Taylor is able to see this, you know, vision come through with Pete Hughes and he at least gets them to this step, you can prove that it can be done. You can say, we've proven that we can get the talent to Manhattan, Kansas. Any coach can do that. We can get a team to the College World Series. Any coach can do that. That is significant in terms of raising the bar and what the expected ceiling of K-State baseball could be. And now that's not saying that if K-State goes that, or even right now, the expectation should not be for K-State baseball to be in a super regional every year. That's just far and away, not even a realistic possibility because of a lot of the parameters that surround college baseball and weather and everything else. But there should at least be an expectation now that, hey, this team should be in the tournament every other year or so. And there should be that deep run that gets made occasionally. And I think that's important. And I think that Gene Taylor has already done that with the Chris Kleiman hire, where somebody had to come in and prove that it could be done and your name wasn't Bill Snyder. And Chris Kleiman has proven that. So when Chris Kleiman is done and retired and whatever, the next person up, barring that college athletics is not so totally screwed up that Schools like K-State and KU and Oklahoma State, that job doesn't even matter to coaches anymore. But somebody is going to look and say, man, K-State would be an awesome job to have. Like, I would love to take that. 
He's done that there. Obviously, basketball is showing a commitment with Jerome Tang. So I, I'm with you. I think this is probably second. I think this is probably second behind uh, uh, behind the, the Chris Kleiman situation just because football is so important and somebody had to prove that it could be done. And Kleiman's been, I mean, I think already world's better than what you would have thought one of the better outcomes could have been in terms of hiring a coach there. But this would be pretty impressive and a really nice feather in your cap if you could get – a Midwest school that's never done it to the College World Series. Uh, certainly Pete Hughes would deserve the credit there, but also Gene Taylor would deserve it for picking the guy that got it done. Yeah, I, I would even hear out an argument to say that that even just getting to a Super Regional might be third or fourth in terms of on-court, on-field success for somebody in the Gene Taylor era. It just It's so hard to make a Super Regional when you're – yeah, Midwest school. I mean, go go look at the the sixteen schools that made a super regional this year. It, it's very very tough, and to make it out of school like K State is really really impressive. And I think that even though that they probably underachieved, it, it makes the season. No matter what happens this weekend, you have to say that it was a success because you did something that you'd only done one time in your school's history. Well, and also what's fascinating about that, I forget who tweeted it out. Uh, but I saw somebody say that if K State were to make the College World Series, they would be the only team under eight hours away from Omaha. Like that's the kind of thing that you're dealing with here. That's the kind of situation that you get with being a Midwest school. And if you go and look to see who has the most College World Series appearances of all time, Texas, Miami, Florida State, Arizona State, USC. Oklahoma State is the most Midwest one there. They, they've they gone 20 times uh, in their school's history, but then you get back to southern and, and coastal states, LSU, Stanford, Arizona, Fullerton, Florida, Clemson, Mississippi State, Arkansas, North Carolina, Oklahoma, back in that same mix. Like, it's not an easy thing to do. It really isn't. And, uh, I mean, Wichita State is the best example for success in this in this area and they went to seven of them their last one though was back in the 90s and it's a totally different ball game in college athletics than it was then like probably a lot easier to convince guys to come play college baseball in kansas at a at a small school like that than it would be now but uh impressive nonetheless what's being done by by k-state baseball and uh, i think it's good to keep perspective especially for somebody like me like i i'm aware that i can be pretty negative and critical i think it's deserved a handful of times for for this team but you also kind of have to live in the moment and and understand that what is being done doesn't happen all the time and it's it's very impressive and now we'll see what k state can do over the next uh 3 days and if they can punch their ticket to omaha for the first time in school history yeah, it's pretty wild when you look at who has won a college baseball national championship just in general. If you're not from the coast or down south, the the last winner to be like from this area and in, in the Midwest was in 1994 when Oklahoma won it. Yeah. So like just being able to get to a super regional, I think is super, super impressive and isn't something that should be kind of taken for granted. Yep, and if you're talking and looking at teams from this area and uh, in terms of when their like, most recent uh, College World Series appearance would have been, um, the best example uh, recently, Oral Roberts got in in 2023. Uh, Oklahoma went in 2022. But if you're looking around and you're trying to find schools that uh, are north of even that Oklahoma and Arkansas uh, border there, it's it's a small list. Notre Dame did it in 2022. Michigan did it in 2019. And it was a really big deal there. Uh, and then after that, you're searching a while to go back to 2016 in Oklahoma State. Like it's just it's not an easy thing to do. So we'll see if K State's able to get it done. How it ends up looking, they'll send Owen Borma to the mound for game number one tomorrow against the Cavaliers at six o'clock uh, with the game on ESPNU and the K State Sports Network. Uh, I'm sure. And see, Roy Philpot is on the call there. Uh, I've got opinions there. They're not great. They're not bad. Uh, so I would I would encourage you to listen to Brian Smoller and Matt Walters uh, on K Man. That that is what I would tell you to do. They can't. Philpot is still better than who who we had in, in Fayetteville. That was rough. 
both of yeah. those guys. Roy Philpotts just got kind of an interesting twang to his voice, but we'll leave it at that. So uh, we are out of here. We'll be back talking cats again tomorrow. We'll we'll bring football back into the fold. Uh, we are on the clock. We're five days away from when ballots have to be submitted for uh, the Big 12 preseason uh, predictions. So we'll talk about that, incorporate that into the show, have that ready to go and have a fun day predicting stuff that doesn't matter five months from now. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching KSO. Back again tomorrow, talking the cats.